What do you get when you combine Robotron 2084 with just a sprinkling of The Running Man and Robocop? You get Smash TV, one of the most entertaining and difficult video games ever made in the history of this universe. Smash TV arcade machines were released in 1990. This game must have made Williams and the arcades bucket loads of money. It's so much fun that you can't stop playing this game, even if you're killed off every 30 seconds. The secret is weapon power-ups. If you don't have one of the more powerful guns, you're screwed. Or the force field, that's even more effective, come to think of it. With the force field, you can just run your way through waves of enemies. That's, that's a lot of fun. Wish I could do that in real life. And the rotating saw blades are also quite effective, naturally. I love this style of game, the Robotron 2084 style, and Eugene Jarvis is one of the creators of Smash TV. He's the mastermind behind Robotron 2084. The control scheme is the same, the left joystick moves you around, the right joystick fires. Here on the Xbox Live Arcade version, graphically it looks just like the arcade machine, which I haven't seen for quite some time, but I spent a lot of money on that arcade machine. I, I loved this game. And how could you not? Look at it, it's just ridiculous. Similar to what we've seen more recently with Mad World, and of course the Running Man, you're in a violent game show out to earn big money and big prizes by making it through these waves of enemies and robots and snakes and monsters and... You get to win VCRs for all your hard work. I agree with the crowd, that's disappointing. Unlike Robotron, the standard shot in this game doesn't do squat against the waves of enemies coming at you. And it's not that easy to earn extra lives, at least not as easy as it is in Robotron 2084. So from the arcade machine standpoint, this game is brilliant. It's so fun that you can't stop playing it, but so difficult that you have to keep plugging quarters into it to continue. Ingenious. On the Xbox Live Arcade version, you can just keep playing. You have unlimited continues. And as you see on screen, the enemies just converge on you without mercy. And there's end bosses. Nice, easy end bosses. Didn't Mr. Bungle sample that guy's roar? I swear I've heard it before. I know they sampled a pinball machine that I've played before, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's in Mr. Bungle. Everybody likes Mr. Bungle. Super VCRs! Boy, I hope those are Betamax. Could use a few of them. And toasters. Let's get back to the gameplay of this lovely, lovely game. After the first level, things go from bad to worse for your guy who's now surrounded by robots and enemy drones and eventually snakes and... 
tanks, and it just it just doesn't get easier for this guy. I'd buy that for a dollar. Smash TV is best played with two players, and over Xbox Live Arcade you can play this game with a friend, no matter where they are in the world. It makes a bit more sense as well, the two of you can gun down the enemies a bit more effectively than just one person. Which in the arcades would have translated to two people shoving quarters into the Smash TV machine. This game made it onto numerous game consoles, including the NES and Sega Genesis, and many more. And a sequel was apparently talked about, I guess they never did get around to making it, and even in the end credits when you play all the way through the game, it alludes to another one. Sadly, as far as I know, there's no sequel to Smash TV. I wish they'd get around to making it. There's a variety of power-ups that you can get. The force field is probably the most powerful. There's the spread shot, grenade launcher, missile launcher, a speed power up, a shot doubler that rotates around you and doubles whatever weapon you're firing, and then one that goes with the end boss levels. My favorite is the spread shot. I think that's the most effective for just wiping out hordes of enemies. It also it lasts a bit longer than the grenades. The grenades are also very effective. You can just run into waves of enemies with the grenades until they run out and then they uh, slaughter you. Did anyone else notice that the TV size that you win, the TVs, are 2600 inch TVs? Atari 2600 reference, perhaps? This game is just a couple bucks on Xbox Live Arcade and plays very well with the Xbox 360 controller. It uses the two analog sticks. And while I prefer the arcade machine for the giant joysticks, it works pretty well. If you've never played this game, you should. And if you have played it, this is a terrific version of Smash TV. And it won't be that long until reality TV shows actually look like this anyway. I think the running man definitely had the future predicted. One.